Okay, so it's about time. So I guess uh, not many more people will be coming. I mean, it's not not many of us, but uh, well, I guess a lot of people got scared with this uh, virus thing. So I can assume that the ones who are here are either the strongest, the bravest, or the craziest, whichever it is. You're my kind of people. So <laughs> thanks for coming. Uh, it's it's nice to be here uh, at the Hyperledger Global Forum uh, presenting Tokenation. We, uh, Tokenation just became uh, a member uh, of the Linux Foundation and, and of the Hyperledger project. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, João Mota from Void Software. We're partners with uh, Tokenation. They've invited me to come and deliver this presentation on their behalf uh, and tell you a little bit about what we're doing uh, together uh, in this in this space, um, and specifically using uh, Sawtooth. Um, so, Tokenation uh, in, in Void, we started uh, collaborating in March 2018, so a couple of years ago, uh, when we were approached uh, to, to try to, to come up with a technical solution for their project. And we brainstormed together a lot. Uh, we had a period where we were going back and forth with uh, many possibilities. Basically, Tokenition had developed a novel idea in terms of uh, creating a, a new platform uh, for a whole new tokenization ecosystem. Um, but uh, they needed a, a, a technical solution that would support their uh, expectations and their objectives. Um, now, the briefing is um, that we intend here to, to create a platform that allows anyone to create, issue, and exchange uh, assets through uh, a fast process. Uh, but unlike what, uh, what we see out there in past projects, we want to take it a step further by introducing uh, anti-volatility uh, algorithms. Not anti-volatility, a volatility absorption uh, algorithm. So we want to make sure that the ecosystem is sustainable and durable. Um, now, when, uh, when we assessed the available frameworks to do so, it became uh, very early on clear that uh, Hyperledger Sawtooth was a very good candidate for this, uh, as it had a, a, a very interesting mix of, uh, of features that would support these goals. Uh, but also, of course, as at Void, we had some past experience with, uh, with the project. I mean, even though it was still in early days, and, and still is in, in, in t under intense development, uh, but we still um, believe that it, would, it, could, it could provide with a, quite a few distinctive factors that would help us in the future. Uh, and so, gathering the general project requirements, that, that can become uh, quite clear. So, the first one is scalability, because even though we're starting in Portugal, that's where we're based, uh, and we're starting uh, at our own uh, national level scale, uh, we did from the start have the expectation of going uh, global uh, quite quickly with the project, uh, which, which is happening already, we can say. Uh, it's already pretty diversified in terms of uh, user adoption in Europe. Um, then, of course, being decentralized, that's um, paramount to the uh, main uh, idea behind the project. Tokenization cannot truly happen in a credible way without a fully decentralized system. Uh, and we wanted to ensure full traceability uh, across uh, the, the whole system, uh, as we want to meet, be able to meet present and future governance requirements. I mean, we all know that in this space, uh, governance is still uh, pretty much experimental. I mean, we've got, we've been over the past year, exploring regulatory constraints in many different uh, geographies. You've got uh, governments looking at uh, tokens as utility assets, others consider it equity assets, others consider them as currency. Portugal just considers uh, any crypto asset as a, as a currency as any other, so any capital gains or losses from those assets are considered the same as, as what you get in the Forex market. It's, it's still, I mean, here in the US it's something else. One thing that we wanted, that we didn't know, is we wanted to make sure that we are future-proofed as much as we can to meet any any upcoming uh, uh, requirements like that. So that that's why, basically, Sawtooth seemed to us as a as a good candidate. But it also had uh, you know two external potential advantages. One is becoming a contributor to to a project or having a, an example, uh, a, workable, a working project based on Sawtooth and being one of the first to do so. I mean, there are benefits from that. Risks as well. The risk uh, normally arising from using something that's still pretty, pretty early, early on, still under development. Uh, but we want to take that risk and help push the, the project further. And uh, well, uh, there's another expectation that we have is that the, the, the modular approach to the consensus algorithms that uh, Sawtooth promotes uh, might help us 
uh, quantum proof our, our consensus in the future. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen in a post-quantum uh, universe, what, what exactly will, will be the reality there. But having swappable consensus modules might give us at least a fighting chance of, uh, of you know, adopting whatever uh, response we get in the future uh, to that challenge. Um, now, w I wouldn't say that these other are minor uh, features of, of Sawtooth, but uh, uh, they were, uh, for us, they, they also were part of that initial uh, decision-making process. The fact that it's agnostic, agnostic to the, the, the processing language used in, the, in transaction processors, in terms of, uh, of the team that we have to build out, of uh, the skills that we have to have in-house uh, to, in the future, be able to support the many requirements of the project, that becomes relevant. Uh, and the fact that it promotes separation between net network and application layers is for us, as a custom software development company that's always been pretty much following the, the three-tier software development pattern. Uh, this resonates with us that, that we have this kind of, of separation, make sure that we uh, deal with the business, business logic in a, as, as independent as possible manner as we deal with uh, data or presentation. Um, last but not least, um, the promise uh, behind Sawtooth that uh, we can leverage trusted execution environments to allow off-ledger transactions to occur without breaking the rules that we set up in the transaction processors is pretty appealing. I mean, again, uh, this has its own challenges. I mean, this does mean using certain specific hardware. Uh, it does reduce the, the, the number of possibilities we have right now uh, in that respect. Um, but again, we are also very keen on pushing this forward, on supporting uh, core developers, trying to work with them, give, give them feedback uh, to try to, to promote this technology as much as possible and make it uh, a usable work in reality in the future. Um, so. Being here at the Upper Ledger Forum, you probably most, most of you know the, um, the key features behind Sawtooth. I'm listing it out here just uh, for, for reference, uh, but uh, we know that uh, uh, it's peer-to-peer -peer network. It has a distributed log, uh, so the separation of layers I mentioned before, uh, and so on. But uh, mainly, it has this, uh, the, the, high, the Sawtooth docs show this, uh, this sentence, which I think pretty much uh, resumes it in a nutshell. It intends to keep distributed ledgers distributed and making smart contracts safe. Now you might say that uh, saying that keeping distributed ledgers distributed is a redundancy, is, is pretty, sounds pretty redundant, uh, but in practice, it's, it's the, we, we like to remind ourselves of that every now and again, because whenever you start building uh, additional logic or more complex logic on top of a blockchain, um, there will be t certain temptations coming up, especially from product owners who are just focusing on, on what the end product should be, start coming up with rules that really don't work in a fully decentralized world. So we keep reminding ourselves that uh, to be fully decentralized, really, you don't have a, one central body of governance. You always have to think in a, in a de decentralized fashion. So that's kind of a, a big reminder. One of those things you put up on the wall uh, so that uh, everyone remembers it uh, throughout project development. Uh, now, there are, of course, a number of challenges uh, that, uh, that we have to face. Um, now, the, the fact that the, the, the consensus mechanisms can be swapped on the fly, it's, that's not something that's fully working on Sawtooth. We know that there's a number of, uh, uh, of encumbrances still. It's not something that's so easily done. It's more easily said than done. Uh, but uh, it's a uh, work in progress. In the, the fact is that right now we don't need to be swapping consensus all the time. It's, it's just something that we need to be there in the future. Um, so it's, it's easily dealt with at the moment. Uh, now, network deployment and management is on itself uh, a challenge. In the previous talk, for those of you who were here, also uh, talked a, a bit about that. And uh, of course, uh, it's ever more relevant uh, that a as the network grows, it becomes more complex to manage, and you have to take care of uh, about security, stability, and so on. Uh, in that respect, we're also collaborating with uh, uh, blockchain technology partners. They'll be here in the afternoon at 2.30, also delivering a talk. It should be pretty interesting, because um, basically they're providing a system based on Kubernetes for, for managed, distributed management of, of nodes. Uh, and of course, with that, that entails uh, its own challenges in, in management of peers. We're right now using PBFT consensus. We were very keen on using uh, Poet, proof of elapsed time. It was supposed to be also one of the, the big add-ons uh, from Sawtooth. It's not fully operational at the moment. We had to stick with PBFT and hopefully uh, change it in, in the future. Um, but, but that also brings its own challenges because PBFT kind of requires that we have uh, a known list of members 
a static list of members beforehand. So managing that static peering uh, needs configuration reconf reconfiguration frequently. Uh, so also challenges we're dealing on a day-to-day -day basis. And for now, for the current size of the network, we can uh, certainly deal with them. Uh, we just need to be prepared for the future as we grow more. Uh, and of course, uh, working in this rapidly changing environment of a project that's not the most mature, we all know that Fabric is way more mature than Sawtooth within the Hyperledger uh, uh, umbrella, um, that, that brings about its own uh, challenges. Um, throughout all this, we're still trying to be innovative uh, while steering clear of centralization. We're still trying to bring here a lot of the business logic that Token Nation has created and makes it, sets it apart from other projects in this space. Uh, as an example, and this is uh, just one, one of the examples that I can talk about, a lot of, uh, of the other algorithms and the other rules behind Token Nation are still under NDA. They'll be released to the public in a couple of months in the white paper. Uh, but this is a, a small example of something that, that's uh, central in the, in the platform. We are able to recover tokens in case of uh, loss of, uh, of private keys or in case uh, the holder decides that those tokens belong to someone who's, for example, underage and they'll uh, receive them once they, they, they enter into adulthood. So basically what we have is uh, mechanisms that will send those tokens after a preset period of time defined by the holder. So one year, three years, five years after that time elapses, those, those, if those assets aren't touched or moved, they'll be distributed by default to the community if there's no other claim for them or to another predefined wallet according to KYC, a KYC process that also is uh, pre uh, mandatory beforehand uh, so that, that that can happen. Um, this, uh, th this on its own, uh, being a relatively simple implementation, is innovative enough that so far we haven't found that, uh, that many people that have done it before, so it means working very closely together with the community to, to, to make it a, a reality. In terms of the project itself, just to give an overview of, of what we're trying to achieve, so uh, the um, two main project revenue sources here are uh, tokenize it and, and savings coin. So tokenize it's the platform for the tailor-made and low-cost tokenization of assets, be it uh, companies, ideas, uh, whatever. But, so, but we will ha we do have a process to help you uh, come to this space. And savings coin is the underlying utility token that is your long-term savings uh, uh, investment uh, that supports the whole uh, the, the whole framework and the whole systems. It's, so it's basically a crypto savings token uh, that follows those uh, volatility absorption rules. Um, to make sure that uh, as you hold your tokens, you're supporting the network, getting dividends from it, um, but in basically having your, your pension fund uh, on the blockchain. Uh, then we have uh, token storage and management, so our, our own wallet, uh, and a number of utilities for the many different applications that we currently have in the roadmap and that, that, that will appear uh, in the future. Um, Special uh, mention here to the exchange, this decentralized exchange that we're developing. Uh, one of the innovations here as well is to have the full order book on chain. Um, this we believe is another big step in meeting regulatory uh, compliance requirements in the future. Um, as more and more, and uh, I've, I've just uh, last week was reading through this report from the New York, New York, lawyer, New York Lawyers Bar to the government uh, regarding an opinion on cryptos. Uh, because the IRS has, has launched quite a few number of uh, guidelines regarding uh, cryptos. And one of the key uh, areas of conflict and of, of questioning there is how to assess the value of your crypto assets uh, in terms of revenue taxing. Uh, now, the, the suggestions from the bar are that, uh, that you should take the average value in the exchange when the asset was traded. Uh, but we all know that that's um, kind of murky ground there. I mean, it uh, depends on which exchange it is. I mean, it's a, it, ev most exchanges out there are centralized. So we believe this is one of the solutions for that, that if we have a full order book already on chain, we kind of get rid of, uh, of that uh, doubt there and make it even more transparent. Um, so basically, uh, uh, Savings Coin, we believe, is... Uh, is uh, represents a new era for uh, savings and, uh, based on crypto assets. Uh, and uh, the, any other token that's launched on Token Nation benefits from the same uh, uh, algorithms. Uh, we kind of list them out here uh, for reference. Um, but we, we truly believe that this minimization of volatility uh, can represent a, a, an absolutely new era for cryptos 
even if it's not uh, um, right now the, the first projects in tokenization, eventually we, we believe this is the way uh, uh, the things tend to evolve. And this can only be made a reality uh, through uh, frameworks like Hyperledger, Sawtooth, uh, open source, um, enterprise grade ready, um, and that to provide the reliability and credibility of the project like this needs. Uh, my time is up now, so if you have any questions, feel free, but we'll, we also have a booth in the sponsor's lounge. Uh, we'll be there to answer any, any questions that you have, uh, any details, provide additional information. Very, very happy to do so. And, you know, thanks a lot for, for coming and uh, for being brave enough to, to weather it out and uh, face the risk of uh, all the risks that we are subject to these days uh, in being here. Thanks very much. <laughs>